Hi, this is Sean Chua. Welcome back to SimpleCamConcepts.com. Today we're going to discuss on the topic known as metals. And this topic is very important to both the O-level pure chemistry as well as IP pure chemistry students because this is an application topic. Now metals are highly seen and uh, used in our everyday lives and as chemists, all chemistry students, we need to know metals very well and how and know how its physical uh, so-called properties is related to its chemical structures itself. All right. So first of all, do appreciate that most metals are solid states. All right. They exist as solid states at room temperature pressure. The only metals that exist as a non-solid is actually mercury. Mercury is actually a liquid at room temperature. So most of our questions is based on the rest of the metals, all right? So uh, in kinetic particle theory, you also learn that uh, solids, or uh, in terms of solids, um, the particles are arranged uh, together in a closely packed manner and with a regular arrangement or pattern, all right? So this is how I'm gonna start the discussion today. These pure metals and uh, this is how I'm gonna draw the particles. Uh, which is the atoms in uh, the structure itself, all right? So I'm going to talk about the properties. There are four key properties in metals. And first of all is that it has high densities, all right? So this has, uh, so what has to do with the packing itself, all right? So if you look at this, what happened is um, in pure metals, all right, um, the atoms are closely packed together. So this is a keyword I will write, all right? Key set. So set of keywords that I will write. To get my marks in the exam. So atoms are closely packed together per unit volume if you want, all right? Per unit volume. So that makes uh, metals to have uh, so-called high densities. Next, metals are malleable and ductile. Now what is the meaning called malleable? What is the definition? Malleable refers to the ability to bend without breaking, while ductile or ductility refers to the ability to stretch into wires or drawn into wires pull it, uh, without breaking. All right? So these are so-called key characteristics of uh, metals itself. So how come they are malleable and ductile? This is because uh, if you look at metals, all the atoms are of the same size. All right? Atoms are the same size and therefore they can easily so-called slide past each other if I apply a force on opposite side. All right? So in exam, I'll write this, uh, the atoms are of the same size and therefore they can easily slide past each other. All right, we go straight to the point, look at the concepts and the associated keywords, all right? Now, the third one is pure metals tend to have, or your metals tend to have a high melting point and boiling point. Uh, why is it like that? So let me give you an example. Um, we use sodium. Sodium is a group one metal, so a one valence electron. So this is sodium atom. Sodium atom. Sodium. Sodium. So what happened is that the one valence electron per atom, uh, they have nothing to do, so they tend to jump out into the empty space. This is known as the sea of delocalized electrons. So the electrons is here. Alright, so electrons all over the place. Uh, if you have six atoms uh, that you draw, then you must have six electrons. Three, four, five, six, all right? Six of them. So once the sodium atom loses that one electron, you will then become a sodium ion, as you can see. So this is your Na plus ions. Now, we also learn that opposite charge or opposite charge charges tend to attract. So this is positive ion, while this is uh, electrons is negative. So they form this kind of uh, attraction towards each other. Huh? So basically, they just need to be oppositely charged. So you can see there's a lot of uh, attractions that is involved. All right. So this one is known as electrostatic forces, which is very very strong, and because of that, a large amount of energy is required to overcome it. Therefore, it has high melting and boiling point. So let me write it out. In the exam, that's what I'm going to write. It's a strong electrostatic forces of attraction between 
the positive metal ions and the C of delocalized electron. That will get us our mark. Alright, then you conclude by saying that large amount of energy is required to overcome this strong forces. Alright, that's something that's taught in uh, chemical bonding. Alright. Now, next, uh, the fourth property is that uh, metals tend to be good electrical conductor. Um, the reason is actually linked to the previous part that we discussed. Can you see that electrons over here? They are all so-called swimming around. Alright? We say that they are free moving which also means they are mobile electrons. Right? They are known as free moving and mobile electrons. What happens is that when they are mobile, they can act as charge carriers and help to conduct electricity. So in exam, I will say that um, the delocalized or C of delocalized electrons are mobile. This is the C of delocalized electrons are mobile and therefore they are mobile and therefore they help they act as charge carrier or carriers which helps to conduct electricity okay so these are the properties of metals you realize they are very very useful so metals do have these useful properties but note that pure metals are not commonly used in our everyday lives uh, because they have two problems most of the pure metals they are either too soft because they're malleable or ductile so you you cannot really use them in our everyday uh, use right our everyday life so they are too soft and malleable number two uh, they tend to react with react with air and water uh, i.e they tend to corrode right in the presence of air and water therefore pure metals once again are not commonly used so how do we use them? So what are the so-called metals that we see in our everyday lives? We actually see them being used as alloys. All right. So we're going to go to the next section. It's called alloys. Now what are alloys? Let's define it first. Okay. Now alloys are formally defined, and you will be asked in exam. You will be tested. They are defined as uh, a mixture. They are basically a mixture of a metal. Right, with a main metal with at least one other element so it could be more than one element that is uh, so-called mixed with the main metal all right and this metal do know that it can be uh, this element I mean can be a metallic element or it can be a non metallic element all right it could be either one of them and uh, so what's the big deal about this um, is because of the structure over here okay so all in all alloys help to improve something in pure metals itself which is the malleability and ductility they're too soft because of that so what happened is one of the reason of doing alloy is to so-called uh, improve all right improve its strength it basically makes uh, your metal uh, stronger and harder or less malleable and then you can use it in our everyday lives so how how is it being done all right very easy it's because of this structure as you can see let's assume the either one of them let's you assume that the smaller atoms all right over here is the metal Okay, so I know right here, this is the metal. What I'm going to do is we're going to add an additional element, all right, into it. So this is so-called, let me arrow down here. This is the other element. Now, it's important to draw them such that the size is different, all right? Because what happened is in alloy, in alloy, the elements are of the elements or rather atoms of the elements the atoms of the metallic as well as the other element right, are of different size they are of different size and because of different size what happened that is that it will disrupt the regular arrangement 
It disrupts the regular arrangement of uh, the pattern, the regular pattern itself, right? Those, so the, the regular pattern or arrangement has been disrupted and therefore the atoms uh, are unable to slide past each other. And that makes your alloy stronger and harder, all right? So this is one of the key reasons why people do alloys. And uh, perhaps I give you, I can give you a few more reasons why people do alloy. Just now I talk about uh, pure metals not commonly used because uh, it, it tends to react with air and water. That's called corrosion. So over here, we do alloy is to do what? Is to improve the corrosion resistance of the metal. All right, to improve the corrosion resistance of the metal. Besides that. The two more main reasons, uh, or two more reasons, uh, the main one is number one and number two. The two more reasons why people want to do alloying, all right? One um, is to so-called improve the appearance of the metal. So you add another element in to make it um, um, more shiny, or uh, probably usually it's more shiny, all right? Not so dull, all right? So that you can use it um, for jewelry and other purposes. So improve the appearance of the metal as well as to lower the melting point of the metal uh, for example sometimes we want to do uh, soldering all right soldering itself so what happened is this metal to be used as a solder must be easy to melt all right melt and then it's used to connect two metals together so there is an advantage to lower the melting point of the metals by including another element because it acts as an impurity, okay? So this is uh, metals versus alloys and how the physical properties um, affect uh, so-called the, or rather the structure of the metal affect the physical properties itself, all right? And I hope you enjoy yourself and I look forward to meeting you again in the next video where we discuss on the chemical properties of metals. I see you in the next video. Thank you.